ったんですよ Hey, Carl. Yes, Justice O'Clock. We guarantee justice in three days or less, or your money back. Outstanding. Hopefully, Phoenix takes I all use for payments. Yes, 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 indeed. to it and oops might help if I had told it to capture let's see there we go all right now let's get sound going again all right there we go so at this time we don't want to continue we need to start a new one justice for all <laughs> All right, episode one, The Lost Turnabout. Huff, huff, grr. How did I get into this mess? Probably the same way you usually get into these messes. That's far enough. You can't run forever. Mr. Phoenix, right? What? <laughs> what? What have I done wrong? I cannot allow you to go on like this. But I'm just a simple defense attorney. Silence! You are no longer worthy of your title. September 8, 9.08 a.m. District Court. Defendant lobby number one. What a nightmare. And I bet it was this ringtone that caused it. Yeah, I bet too. I really shouldn't be dozing off right before a trial starts anyway. Beep. Hmm? Looks like they hung up. Ah, good. I finally found it. What? Talk about a close call. I hate to do this to you, but... It's nothing personal, Mr. Attorney. A few minutes later, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number One. Ouch, my head is throbbing. And why does it feel so foggy in there? Good morning. Eck. Uh, good morning. What's wrong? You don't look well. People are at their best first thing in the morning. Where's that fighting spirit? <laughs> Who are these people that are at their best first thing in the morning? <laughs> oh boy, okay. Sorry, but can you please turn the cheeriness down? 
Oh, do we have a new Maya stand in for this case? Maybe. <laughs> My head sort of hurts. Roger that. Um, am I in trouble or something? Huh? Trouble? Wait, never mind. You're a policewoman, right? I thought maybe I'd done something wrong. Well, what are you talking about? I'm the one in trouble. What? I'm placing my life in your hands today, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Life in my hands? You promised me. You said that you'd prove I was not guilty. Not guilty? <laughs> Just when I thought all hope was lost, when all the other lawyers had laughed me off. Leave it to me, you said. You, the one and only Phoenix Wright, came to save the day. And just like that, I was moved to tears, sir. I'll never forget what you're doing for me. Ever. What is this girl babbling about? Actually, I really love to watch court proceedings, and I always root for you to win. When I'm off duty, I like to come here and... What's wrong? You've been acting really strange, and you keep staring at me. You're making me kind of nervous, sir. I mean, you've been saluting me this whole time, which is also kind of weird. Oh, sorry. Hmm, I'm afraid to ask, but here it goes. So this might sound bad, but, uh, who are you? What? Mr. Wright, how can you say that? How can you do this to the fragile heart of a girl about to go on trial? You're absolutely horrible. No, I mean, I didn't mean it like that. Is this how a defense, client, defense attorney treats his client? Sir, I can't believe this. No, it's just... Well, I think you have the wrong person. I'm... Yes, I'm... Oh, great. We're not talking like amnesia here. I'm... Who am I? Why am I drawing a blank? Lovely. Oh, this is not good. The trial will begin shortly. Will the defendant and her lawyer please proceed to the courtroom immediately? The trial's about to start. I'm counting on you in there, okay? Oh boy. Going into this with no prep. Oh, lovely. Hmm, I guess I must have amnesia. Let's see, what can I piece together? From the sound of things, it's probably safe to say I'm a defense attorney. <laughs> and that girl, I said I'd prove her not guilty. I can't believe I made such an irresponsible promise. Arg! Someone, please! Tell me this is just a bad dream. Why do I get the feeling this is one dream I won't be waking up from? Gulp. September 8, 10 a.m. District Court. Courtroom number 2. Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. What is it, Mr. Wright? Um, er, are you talking to me? Do you see any other defense attorneys here? I guess not. <laughs> now then, are you ready? Um... This kind of feels like a save point here. Uh, sure. Yeah, we're totally ready. I guess I should say yes for now. Are you ready, Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. Wait a second. If her life is in my hands, I should really do the responsible thing. Actually, you see, Your Honor, my memory is kind of... The court will not hear the defense's excuses. Because the defendant is a member of the police, this case is under great scrutiny. Therefore, we must make this trial fair but swift. I believe I've told you this before. I hope you're not telling me you've forgotten. Actually, I have. Oh, boy. Mr. Payne, your opening statement, please. Yes, Your Honor. So I'm sure you're well aware, the defendant is accused of killing her lover. What's worse, her lover was a fellow police officer. A policeman? You did what to a policeman? It wasn't me! And besides, Dustin and I, we weren't lovers like that. In any case, 
prosecution will prove that the guilty party is none other than the defendant. Very well. Mr. Payne, please call your first witness. <laughs> it's been a while, Mr. Wright. Let's see what you've learned since last time. I won't show you any mercy this time, rookie. Okay, and who are you again? Oh. The prosecution calls Detective Dick Gumshoe to the stand. Oh, boy. Lovely. Here we go. Don't let me down, Mr. Wright. Nowhere to hide. I'm so dead. Yep. Witness, please state your name and occupation. My name is Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. You don't look very well, detective. Well, sir, the defendant, she works under me, so, you know. You work under that, detective? Yes, sir. And while I was a trainee, he was always watching out for me, sir. He's such a wonderful guy, sir. I'll never forget what he's done for me. Okay, calm down. I believe you. <laughs> Shut of gumshoe. Please describe for us the details of this murder. Yes, sir. It happened at the park near the headquarters. Expose Park. The victim was one of the local cops, Dustin Prince. He was pushed down from the benches on the upper pass, sir. The landing beat up his body bad. Beat his body up bad to snap his neck. The details are listed in the report that was distributed yesterday. Ah, yes. This autopsy report, correct? Why do I not remember getting a copy? <laughs> I see everything is in order here. Even the estimated time of death is unusually well documented. The victim's watch stopped from the impact of the landing, sir. The results of the autopsy confirm the time of death. If I may, Your Honor, the prosecution would like to submit this photograph. Very well, the court accepts it into evidence. Crime photo one added to the court record. Now then, I recall yesterday's preliminary hearing. A very important piece of evidence was brought to our attention. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Yes, I guess. <laughs> Mr. Wright, is your head on right today? There was a very crucial piece of evidence found under the victim's body. Um, was there? Have you lost your mind? Well, actually... <laughs> no, it's just nerves. Give me a second. What? How can you talk like such an amateur? I thought you were a pro, sir. Alright, sir. I'll help you through this. At a time like this, maybe you ought to take a glance at the court record. Court record? Yep. Info about evidence and people involved in this case are all listed there, sir. You can look at the court record by pressing tab. Tab, huh? You really know what you're talking about, don't you? It's too bad I'm a cop, right? Just think. I could totally be a legal aid instead. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? Part is this session. Save your chit-chat for later. Sorry, Your Honor. Well, I guess I better check the court record and see what I can find. What was it again? Tab? Alright, Mr. Wright. Let's see if your notes are in order. What was the piece of evidence found underneath the victim's body? Okay. Glasses found under the victim's body. Yes. Okay. Let's take a second to look at some of this other evidence. Time of death, 9-6 at 6.28 p.m. Cause, broken neck, body was also covered in bruises. I found this in my pocket, but don't remember what it means or how it got there. Okay, so it doesn't seem to be related to the case. The victim fell from the walking path above. Um... Nothing immediately weird looking, so... Okay. Alright. It's simple, Your Honor. A broken pair of glasses. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's a phone, but not, I'm not some big, big city lawyer person. Fancy big city lawyer person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. The victim grabbed his killer's glasses as he was being shoved, sir. And held onto them as he fell. Hey, why are you giving me the evil eye? Those glasses you're wearing. Nah. Yes, this is my spare pair. 
Those glasses they found at the scene of the crime are not mine, I swear, sir. You sure about that? Look, it was a coincidence that on that same day, I accidentally stepped on mine. A coincidence, she says. Urk. <laughs> Your Honor. I have further evidence to present. Oh, you have more? And this evidence is very decisive. Very well. Let's hear from our witness about this evidence. Okay. There's something even more incriminating than the glasses under the bo victim's body, sir. During his date, the victim was pushed from the bench area. But he managed to write the culprit's name on the ground where he landed. What? I don't like saying it, but it was clearly the defendant's name, Maggie, sir. When there's a piece of evidence in the glasses, it's hard not to say she's the culprit. This is a picture of the writing, Your Honor. Why, this is... Yes, I can see your name clearly written here. Prosecution would like to submit this picture. Understood. The court accepts it into evidence. Crime photo 2 added to the court record. Alright. As if the glasses alone didn't make you look suspicious. The victim even wrote your name clear as day on the ground. But, 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 I already told you, those glasses aren't mine. How do you explain his dying message? It's a conspiracy! I'm not guilty, sir! Oh... Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Cross-examine? This is it. I'm counting on you. Sure, what am I supposed to do? What? This isn't like you at all. Normally this is the part where you get in the witness's faces. Get in their faces and do what? I guess there's no way around it. Okay, I'm gonna lend you a hand. Prosecution witnesses all hide things from the court, which means they lie from time to time. Lie? But isn't that a detective your superior? Well, even if they don't mean to lie, sometimes people just remember things wrong. Hmm, like that detective. He does sort of look like a scatterbrain. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Either way, it's bad for us, sir. That's why when you question witnesses, you have to find and expose their lies. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Talk about trial by fire. Here goes nothing. As long as I can expose the lies, we should be alright. Yeah, even without his memory, you can tell who Gumshoe is. I mean, look at that face. I mean, you know. <laughs> I'm about those glasses. Do you have any proof that the belong to my client? The lenses are for nearsightedness and almost the same strength as hers. Even the frames look kind of like the ones she's wearing in her ID, pal. Hmm. What should I do now? Alright. We always press more. Hold it. Almost and kinda are not good enough in a case like this. Er, um... Do you have more definitive proof? Is there something that clearly links the defendant with those glasses? Or, um, uh, the dirt and sand rubbed out any traces of fingerprints or anything else. So what you're saying, detective, is that you have nothing that proves those glasses are my clients. Um, something like that. Whoa, what? I see. Hmm. So there's no proof. Wow, that was amazing. I could totally feel it down in my gut. Okay. Now, you're sure he was pushed and that's how he fell? Yeah, pal. If you look at the wounds on the victim's body, there's no way it was anything else. Hmm. Please continue with your testimony, detective. Anyway, the victim fell pretty far. You managed to write the culprit's name on the ground where he landed. Okay. The culprit's name? Yeah, I was surprised, too. I didn't want to believe it, but... Was the name that of my client? I don't like saying it, but it was clearly the defendant's name, Maggie, sir. Are you absolutely certain? 
Sorry, pal, but that's what it said. This is a picture of it. No matter which way you look, it still says Maggie. Hmm, he's got a point. Hey, hold on! Huh? Don't haw me! I know the picture says Maggie, but... Now that she measures it, something does feel kind of off about this picture. That's how you know you found a contradiction. Now hurry up and present some evidence. So that's what spotting a contradiction feels like. I better check the court record again. Okay. Well, let's just press this quick here. And you are certain that it was the victim who wrote the name on the ground. There were scratches on his fingers from the rough sand. And there were grains of sand stuck under his pointer fingernail. Hmm. Certainly seems the name was written by the victim of himself. That didn't go well. If the writer really was the victim of himself, then we're in a lot of trouble. Soon enough, Phoenix rediscovers the joy of telling someone they're wrong. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Don't give up. Keep that fighting spirit going. I'm glad you're all pumped up, but... I really want to see your special moves, sir. My what? You always look so cool when you present evidence. Present? Evidence? Uh, oh, that present evidence, yeah. Actually, I was just thinking about that. Yes, the great Phoenix Wright is back. Oh, that's right. Huh? I heard that lately you can present not only evidence, but people's profiles as well. It sure makes things a bit more complicated, so be careful, sir. People's profiles, huh? Alright, let's give this another try. Alright, what are we uh, presenting then? Okay. And did we press this point? I don't think so. Oh, okay, we did. Leave me for now, because we. Okay. 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 Broken neck? How the heck did he write it then? Hmm. Will the game give us credit for that? Or are they looking for something else? Hmm. No, 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 no. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. He should be dead instantly if that was the case. Broken necks don't usually allow somebody to, you know, yeah, just have time to write a name. Hmm. Let's take a look at these profiles. Maggie Bird. My client, the only thing I can recall is that she's a policewoman. Victim and a policeman. It seems he was dating the defendant, Maggie Bird. Prosecutor for this case. Last present. Generally bad at getting his points across. Detective at the local precinct in charge of the initial investigation. Hmm. Hmm. Okay.
Yeah, why can't we see anything on this picture? That's a little odd. Will that actually get us anywhere? Nope. Okay, load. Alright. I'm gonna go with you thinking we should probably present the picture itself then. We'll see if there's what it says here. Nope. Hmm. Doesn't seem to be any way to inspect them. Yeah, we only got the back option here. There's no rotating or anything this time. Hmm. All right, we gotta reload anyway. Let's let's press again and let's see what this said uh, there. <laughs> Let me just try this again. Let's see what the pressing said here. Yeah, okay, so this is where he brings it up. Let's try presenting it to this and see what happens. Nope. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know where it's going with this. I kind of hate doing this this early, but let's go ahead and see what. Let's go ahead and look this up. It's not really hinting me in very well. Oh! Oh! My god, that was, um... That, that, that's... Oh, man. Okay, that is a bit odd. Alright, um... Okay. Profiles. Yes, Maggie does not spell her name with an I-E, so... What is it? <laughs> oh no. What? What's come over me? <laughs> Without thinking, I just blurted out objection. <laughs> and I yelled at the top of my lungs, fingered outstretched, ready to take on my opponent. <laughs> what a rush! <laughs> Detective Gumshoe. You talking to me, pal? Please state the defendant's name for me. <laughs> What are you trying to prove with this futile exercise, Mr. Wright? You'll see. This is a very crucial line of questioning. Actually, Mr. Payne, you can answer. The defendant's name, if you please. Where is this ridiculous question coming from? The defendant's name, uh, name is, uh, Maggie Bird. 
I think someone needs to check the court record. What? It says right here that it's Maggie Bird. Ah! It looks like the bird caught the cat napping. Oh boy. Oh, what's going on here? I have no idea either, sir. As you can see, the victim did indeed leave a name, Maggie. However, the defendant's name is actually spelled Maggie. This is a blatant contradiction of facts. Oh! How about that? I hadn't even noticed. But, but, but... But maybe the victim didn't know how to spell her name correctly. May I remind you that it was you who said the defendant is accused of killing her lover? If they were truly lovers, it would be impossible for him not to have known her name. No! This is very true. Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor? Are you absolutely certain that the defendant and the victim, Dustin Prince, were in fact lovers? Uh, yes, I am quite certain, Your Honor. They were a well-known couple in the police force. Detective Gumshu. Please testify for the court the relationship between the victim and the defendant. Yes, sir. Alright, here we go. Officer Prince and Officer Bird have been going out for half a year. It sounded like they were even talking about marriage. The day of the incident just happened to be the victim's birthday, sir. Maggie, I mean Officer Bird, had gotten Officer Prince a present. It was something she'd bought over two months ago. I should know, because she came to me to ask what she should get for him. Oh, those two sound like they were close. Nevertheless, tragedy struck. Hmm, yes, I see. You may cross-examine the witness, Mr. Wright. Alright. Yes, Phoenix getting so meta on us, indeed. Oh, boy. Alright. How do you know about this? Every year in March, we have a training camp for us cops. Officer Bird was a rookie at that time, and she and Officer Prince seemed to hit it off. They got close, I take it? Actually, I was supposed to go too, but... I couldn't pay the deposit for the trip, so I didn't. If only I'd gone on that trip. What is it? Oh, uh, nothing, sir, really. Anyway... Oh, what was that about? Well... Marriage? But wasn't the victim eight years older than her? What? You saying a guy's gotta marry the, someone the same age and himself, pal? No, that's not what I meant at all. Detective Gumshoe and Dustin were only a year apart, you know. Uh, I think this fella has a ways to go before marriage. Mind your own business, pal. Uh... <laughs> I got an achievement for that. Mind your own business, pal. <laughs> Oh, the day of the incident just happened to be the victim's birthday, sir. <laughs> the day of the incident. You mean September 6th? Yeah. The victim, Officer Prince, had just gotten off duty at 5.30 p.m. that day. And since Maggie's night shift hadn't started yet, they went to the park for a bit. Uh, I remember when I was young and in love. Oh, it was a jolly time. That's great, Your Honor. I'm glad you're such a cheerful old man. <laughs> Maggie, I mean Officer Bird, had gotten Officer Prince a present. You seem to know a lot about the defendant. Well, that's because uh, I'm her boss, and I've got to got to watch out for my subordinates. But even even what she was going to give as a president isn't that going a little bit too far? Hey, pal, watch what you say. I know everything that happens under me. If someone so much as scratches there, I really don't need to know that much. <laughs> Mr. Wright, please refrain from badgering the witness. I agree. Even if this witness has a crush on the defendant, that should not be the point of discussion at this time. Whoa, wait a second. Why are we talking about this? It's all your fault, pal. You're guilty, guilty, guilty. I should have you arrested. I think the good detective is about done here. <laughs> oh, boy. Over two months ago? Yep, she's a very considerate woman, pal. So, what was this birthday present? She got him a glove. 
A single glove? Why was she only given one? Um, actually, Your Honor, the glove in question is a baseball glove. Oh, I see. A baseball glove. Officer Prince was a huge baseball fan. Baseball glove? Hmm. Oh, we always gonna press further. Just now, I believe you said that the present was something she had bought over two months ago? Yeah. Are you saying she bought the glove at a star that far in advance? Nah, nothing like that, pal. Then what is it like? She ordered it. It was custom made. Custom made? That glove was custom made? Yep, that's what I said. Hmm. So the glove was custom made. Your Honor, I really don't see how this glove is related to the case. Yes, it was seen there was little relevance. What do you think, Mr. Wright? Do you think this glove is really relevant to this case? Um... Of course I'm always going to say yes. As the kids say, we're in it for the biscuit, so... I don't know where this will lead me, but... Of course it is relevant. That glove is the key to this whole case. Yes, bluffing to the max. Now this is the Mr. Right, I know. <laughs> I'm so happy you're back, sir. I was wondering how long it would take. This is great. <laughs> hmm, pressing people. It feels like I've done this before. As if I used to do this to squeeze information from even the most tight-lipped people. Very well. If you're that convinced, then let us hear some more about the matter. Actually, I brought the glove with me today. And? Why didn't you say so earlier? How are you to show the glove to the court? Well, I didn't think it had anything to do with this case. <laughs> anyway, this is it, sir. I mean, I can see it's a baseball glove, but I kind of look at it and kind of go think that more that it's like a, um, you know, thing of bananas, so... <laughs> oh, boy. That's quite the color. It's uh, rather yellow, isn't it? Baseball glove added to the court record. Officer Prince really liked the color yellow. And that's why you had to special order it? Yep, that's right. That and one other reason. I think this court has heard enough. And it's clear the victim and the defendant were involved with each other. Yes, that's correct, Your Honor. Now, if that is true, it brings up an important question. Was the name Maggie really written by the victim? I see your point, Your Honor. Detective Gumshoe, please tell the court a little more about the name on the ground. Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> we first looked into the handwriting. Unfortunately, we couldn't confirm that it was the victim's handwriting. Next, we checked the victim's pointer finger. We found that there was sand trapped under the victim's fingernail. There were also scratches on his skin that were caused by him writing on the ground. From this, we can confirm that the victim wrote this name with his right hand. Hmm. Yes, yeah, a perfectly logical conclusion. Now then, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> but can you really determine handwriting based on a sample written in sand? <laughs> this is why amateurs are amateurs. We're not a bunch of simpletons, pal. Scientific investigation in this country is actually pretty good. Hmm. I believe it's time to get back to the real point. Agreed, Your Honor. So, what was the result of the investigation? Yeah, it's pretty good. Unfortunately, we couldn't we couldn't determine it was the victim's handwriting. Yeah, because handwriting analysis is uh, not not that accurate a science. <laughs> Boy, yes. So, in the end, you couldn't confirm it? Hey, don't you look down on us. I told you, we're not a bunch of simpletons, pal. Everyone knows you can't find out everything you want with scientific investigation. I never heard that before. Me neither. <laughs> Nor I. <laughs> I never heard anything like that at the police academy, sir. Okay, so I made it up. Anyway. <laughs> Next, we check the victim's pointer finger. I mean, I'm a simpleton, but the rest of my precinct does their job, sort of. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, indeed, indeed. 
His pointer finger? You know, the one you're always pointing and waving around in people's faces? Ahahahaha, <laughs> don't tell me it bothers you. Every time you do it, I have a mini heart attack. It's like you're trying to kill me, pal. <laughs> in any case, you examine the victim's index finger, correct? Yeah, we figured there should be something on his finger if he'd been writing in sand. Hmm. And the results? We found there was sand trapped under the victim's fingernail. <laughs> and what does that prove? Well, it proves that he did write that name with his own finger. Yes, which explains why there was sand stuck under his nail. I guess he's right. And there's more. There were also scratches on his skin that were caused by him writing on the ground. From this, we can confirm that the victim wrote the name with... Okay, let's just press this quick. Scratches on his skin? Yep, you can't see them with your naked eye, but they're there. That is incredible. Sure is. That's the power of scientific investigation. They're so small, we had to use a magnifying glass, like a really strong one. It's got that really scientific-sounding name. You mean a microscope? Yeah, that's it. We used one of those, and that's how we found them. I can't believe this guy doesn't know what a microscope is. Oh, boy. From this, we can confirm that the victim wrote the name with his right hand. Are you absolutely sure? I believe that in the power of science. Hmm. I wonder if my evidence is solid enough to counter with. Listening to this, you would think there was only one conclusion. That the name was definitely written by the victim. But don't you think that would be really strange, sir? Dustin really wrote that message with his right hand. Do you think I would have gone through that much trouble to get him his present? A present? What about it? It's a left-handed glove, isn't it? Okay. Let's look at that again. No, it's a right-handed glove, but yeah, you would not write, you do it on your opposite hand, so yeah. Hmm. Let's try it. Detective Gumshoe, take a look at this. That's the glove, right? Can you tell the court what is special about this glove? What's special? Um, never really thought about it, but, uh... It's really yellow. And that's about it. Yes, it's really yellow, but that is only one of its qualities. Hmm? There's another reason why it's special. And what would that be? It's very simple. This glove is made for a left-handed person. Left-handed? Why, you're absolutely right. This glove's made to be worn on the right hand. That is why it had to be custom-made. I've never seen a bright yellow left-hander's glove for sale, have you? Well, um, no. <laughs> so, detective. Which hand did the victim use to write the name with again? That's easy. Look, it's obvious from this picture that it was his... Wait a sec. Don't forget that the victim was left-handed. Ah! <laughs> that is, that is, I mean, uh... Object. Wow. This guy's um, objection is something else. <laughs> wow. Okay. Overruled. <laughs> Mr. Wright, I would like to know what your line of reasoning proves. There's only one conclusion that can be drawn. A left-handed person could not have written a message like with his right hand. Therefore, the person who wrote the name Maggie could not have been the victim. Order! Order! When you think about it that way, then yes. It's not possible that this name was written by the victim himself. Then that means Maggie is... No! It's not possible! Mr. Payne! Yes, Your Honor? The evidence the prosecution has presented to fail to prove the defendant's guilt. In fact, I believe you have proven her to be innocent. No! 
All right, you did it, Mr. Wright. Phew, I feel like I can breathe again. Seems that we have reached the conclusion. You did a fine job once again, Mr. Wright. Me, Your Honor? Ah, oh, well, thank you, sir. See, you got complimented by the judge again. You're really good. And that's why you can't give up on being a lawyer, sir. Are you joking? I'm more than ready to retire. Uh, I will now announce my verdict. This court finds the defendant, Maggie Bird. No, not yet! I suspected that was coming. I mean, please give me a few more minutes, Your Honor. What is the meaning of this, Mr. Payne? The prosecution is not finished yet. What do you mean? We would like to call our next witness to the stand. What? Yeah, his objection noise is uh, something else. And what did this witness witness? The moment the victim was pushed to his death. What's more, he saw the very face of the culprit. What the heck? Oh, boy. Order. Order in the court. I believe a recess is in order. Afterwards, we will hear from this new witness. I had a feeling it was a bit too easy. Hmm, I need more information. I'll have to see what I can find out during this recess. I can't let my guard down. It's only going to get tougher from here. Court is adjourned to a recess. Hmm. We continued. All right. Yes. Let's save. Okay. September eight, eleven forty-three p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number One. Uh, amnesia. I can't believe my lawyer's trying to defend me in such a state. I, uh... Why didn't you tell me, sir? I'm sorry, I didn't mention it to you. Oh, I know what to do. I heard you can fix something like this with a really strong shock to your system. Come on, lower your head a little, sir. A Maggie kick should be all you need. Uh, no, 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 no. I think I'll pass on this one. Come on! Uh, I'm sorry. Whenever I see someone in trouble, I have a hard time leaving them alone. I tend to stick my nose where it doesn't belong and try to tackle everyone's problems. Well, my head's one's problem you won't be tackling today. <laughs> well, we're here to solve your problem first. We can deal with mine later. For now, do you think you can fill me in on a few things? Of course, I'd be honored to. Ah, uh, well, I guess we'll start with my name and then I can tell you about me. No, 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 that's okay, really. I think I know you and your name pretty well by now. I was wondering if you could help me figure out a few things about myself. So my name is Phoenix Wright. What a weird name. <laughs> hmm, this is serious. You really don't remember. I'll tell you what, sir. You can have this back and maybe it'll help. This is a business card? I got this from you. It's my most prized possession. You can borrow it now for now, but please give it back, okay? Okay, there's some numbers written on the back. Oh, that's your cell phone number. Phoenix's business card added to the court record. Alright. I guess for now we should stop talking about me and start talking about this case. This case? Yep. Can you think of anything that would be helpful for me to know? Uh, what can I tell you? Uh, um, hmm. I can't think of anything other than the incident with that cell phone, but... Cell phone? Yeah, your eyes lit up when we talked about it at the detention center, sir. Hurry up then and tell me. This might be very important. Okay, Roger. Mm -hmm. It was on the day of the crime, just before 6 p.m. I picked up a lost cell phone while on a walk with Dustin. Lovely. All of a sudden, the phone began to ring. Deep. Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give this... I can give this back. I'll be right there. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. 
You can call me Maggie. We agreed to meet up at 6 p.m. Did you catch that? She was wearing a hoodie with a blue badge on it. <laughs> oh, boy. Not that thing again. Oh, Dustin and I waited for the person to show up. But they never did. Hmm. So where's the phone you found now? I gave it to you yesterday. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, that thing gets... You just caught that. That thing really gets around. Yeah. I gave it to you yesterday. Huh? To me? Is that phone in my pocket? You mean this? Do you think it has anything to do with the murder? I don't really know. But if my eyes lit up... Ah! You were here all along! You're so mean! I called you a million times, but you wouldn't pick up. And when I went to check in a courtroom, everyone had already left. Hi, Maya. Ack! Now who in the heck is this? Let me guess, I'm supposed to know this girl, too. Hey, good morning, Maggie. And a good morning to you, too, Maya. So, so, how's it going? Okay, there goes my theory that Maya's just in a cunning disguise. <laughs> yeah. Is there a word for worse than abysmal? Oh, and what if I said that everything will be fine? That's right, it's Maya to the rescue with the ultra-decisive, super-important evidence. Here you are, Nick, the thing you wanted me to bring. Huh? Oh, uh, thanks. What in the heck is this, a list? It has about 20 people's names and phone numbers written on it. It was kind of tough, but I managed to take up some dirt. Looks well, like these guys are up to no good. No good? As in... There's a group of con artists the police are currently investigating. I think these guys are members of that group. Names list added to the court record. Okay, why would a group of con artists cop pop up in a case like this? Don't look at me! Hmm. And where did you get this list from in the first place? What?! Don't you remember, Nick? You're the one who asked me to look this up yesterday! Hey, Zero! <laughs> oh, is that right? These numbers were in the memory of that phone Maggie found. Hmm, so that's where they're from. You're awfully forgetful these days, Nick. Okay, good. There's my block. I was wondering when that was coming. Yes. I hope I never get to be a forgetful old prune like you. <laughs> oh, thanks, Maya. Yeah. Uh, Maya, actually, Mr. Wright is, uh... Mr. Wright, recess is now over. Please bring the defendant and return to the courtroom immediately. Oh, oops, guess you have to get going. We can talk about you being old later, Nick. <laughs> I get a feeling it's her favorite topic, yes. Wish us luck! Uh, I guess I have all the pieces now, more or less. All that's left is to put it all together. I'm not going to lose this. I can't. Come on, Nick. Better get a move on. Yeah! <laughs> September 8, 11.54 a.m. District Court, courtroom number two. Court will now reconvene. Please call your next witness to the stand, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. Well, before I do, if I may say a few words. What is it, Mr. Payne? It's about the next witness. He has a tendency to say things to rub people the wrong way, you see. So I ask that the court might be a little lenient on... There's no need to give a preface. Just hurry up and call your witness, please. Yes, Your Honor. The prosecution calls this next witness a drifter who is taking a walk in the park on the day of the murder. <laughs> oh, that's specific. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, he looks like a drifter, all right. Okay, please state your name for the court witness. Before I do, I'd like to clarify a little something. Huh? Oh, all right, go ahead. Just now, you introduced my wonderful self to the court, correct? Perhaps as a drifter who was taking a walk? Did I? But I will not stand for that. Now you tinted the court's eyes and colored me wrongly. Sure, I suppose calling me a university student, but to just give in and everything in my life is to be the utmost top grade quality, you understand? I'm not look really looking for that perfect top notch. I have a regular selection process and I was... Yes, yes, I understand. I'm very sorry. I'll be more careful from now on. Oh, boy. 
What is he? A human chatterbox? Ugh, I have to question him. Fashion, cars, women, glasses, and of course, university. First rates only need apply. I think you've done enough coloring already, pal. Yeah, glasses, but you aren't wearing glasses. That's enough. Your name, witness? Oh, is that how you want to play this? Using your power and influence to keep the young people down? I see how you work now. You old people and your dirty tricks. You thought you had me, but you thought wrong. Uh, I'm sorry, it won't happen again. Oh, man. I forgive you. All right, I suppose I can tell you my name. I am Richard Wellington, the drifting virtuoso with the PhD in drifting, as it were. If you want to, you can call me university student in transit. Ahem, Mr. Wellington. On the day of the murder, you were taking a er, strolling through the park, correct? It would appear that you are attached to that word. If you must, then by all means. But I remind you, I am in no way a prepubescent boy out on a walk with mommy. If you must know, I am... Anyway, please testify to the court what you saw like, during your walk through the park. Uh, see, you said it again. Taking a walk. You know, you... What you witnessed will do, Mr. Wellington. Oh, boy. Okay, what I saw that day. I was at the park all afternoon, deep in thought about my life situation. I don't remember the time all that well, but I do believe it was past 6 p.m. All of a sudden, a police officer falls from above, right in front of my eyes. Without a thought, I looked up, and there I met the eyes of a charming young lady. Of course, I remember her sweet face. It was that of the pretty defendant there. The only other thing I saw was the banana that fell with the police officer. The <laughs> banana. <laughs> Okay, there we go. Hmm, well, that was certainly decisive testimony. Decisive, Nick. Did you hear what he just said? Yeah. That's all you had to say? How can you be so calm? It's strange. My mind is very calm and clear. Maybe it's because I believe in my client. You mean Maggie? Yes, and if she really is innocent, then that can only mean one thing. That guy is lying. You may now question the witness, Mr. Wright. I'll find out the truth, no matter how well you craft your lies. Now, he mentioned something about wearing glasses, but isn't wearing them himself. I'm sure that detail's gonna come in somehow. Gonna come in somewhere. So you were at the park all afternoon? You seem to have a lot of free time. Hmph, <laughs> that was very rude of you. But then again, what can I expect? That's what you get from a man who graduated from a no-name trashy university. No name? Trashy? Now, this might be hard for a mush-headed, feeble-minded baboon like you, but I have to think very carefully about the future of our great country. Oh, I thought you said you were thinking about which college to go to just now. Oh, please. Which university I go to will directly affect the very future of this country. That arrogant little snot. Well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know what time it was? I see you're not wearing a watch, so... Is that the best you can do? Do you think you can discredit me like that? You're just a third-rate biased fool. I guess I can't expect real smarts from you. Grr, his arrogance is really intolerable. So what should I do now? Answer the question. How did you know what time it was? Tsk tsk. I can't believe I have to deal with a worm like you. You're just a shallow man who can only slam on desks and point at people for fun. Hmm, I guess I don't have a choice. I'll try to explain it so even a third-rate simpleton like you can understand. There was this little thing they call a clock at the park. Did you get that? Do you know what a clock is? It's the thing that tells you the time. As you can see, Mr. Wright, it's even in this picture of the crime scene. Oh, so it is. I looked at that clock and that's how I knew the time. But if you ask me this whole concept of breaking time apart, it's so totally... Oh, boy. Um... And yet again, another flood of meaningless words. <laughs> Talk about a first-class waste of time. In any case... 
All of a sudden, a police officer falls from above, right in front of my eyes. Okay. And how do you know he was a police officer? You obviously have no idea how powerful my deductive reasoning skills are. With one glance, I could tell just what kind of occupation he held. A shoddy do-it-yourself hairstyle practically screened. It was also the way he tied those cheap low-quality tooth. And I suppose it was also because he was wearing an officer's uniform. Shouldn't that statement have come first? Wow, that's pretty impressive. Hey, Nick, do you think he's figured out what I do? Even I haven't figured that out yet. Without a thought, I looked up and there I met the eyes of a charming young lady. Are you sure you got a good look at her face? Animals have this thing called an eye, Mr. Right? They use this eye to see things. In the case of humans, we have two of them. Yes, even you. I don't care if I have them or not. Did you or did you not get a clear look at her face? Uh, that's what the witness was just about to get to. I would like to request that Mr. Wright not use such a loud voice during questioning. Sustain, Mr. Wright, please refrain from raising your voice in this court. Then please don't make me have to raise my voice. Are you finished? I'd like to continue if that's alright with you. Of course I remember his sweet face. It was that, it was that of the pretty defendant there. Alright. So you're sure you are not mistaken? Please, don't confuse your pitiful train wreck of a life with mine. I'm what you call a famous brand name product, but you're only a cheap imitation. There's no way someone as magnificent as myself could have made a mistake. Of course, of course. Oh, ho, 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 of course. <laughs> Did you notice anything else of interest, witness? The only other thing I saw was the banana that fell with the police officer. Okay, so, um... Before we press this, let me see... Let's check his profile. Okay, self-proclaimed. Okay, unfortunately he doesn't mention anything about his classes. Okay. Okay. Okay, we can't check that out, apparently. Okay. And apparently we can't look at that any closer either. What's the banana that fell with the police officer? Okay. Let's press it. <laughs> the banana? Well, it was actually more than just one. More like a bunch of bananas. Now what would a bunch of bananas be doing there? And why would I know such a thing? I'm only telling you what I saw. That's really strange. Maybe he never mentioned anything about a bunch of bananas. That's it, Nick. He's gotta be lying about the bananas. Hmm. He could be, but... There's no reason for him to lie about there being bananas at the crime scene. What if it's not a lie? Well, maybe he thought he was seeing one thing and it was something else? Then he mistook something else for a bunch of bananas, and that would be an inaccuracy. Think, Phoenix, think. If my client is innocent, there's no way he could have seen what he says he did. Which means if we can somehow show he's lying... Yeah, that's exactly what we need to do. She's right. She's got a sharp mind, but I just wish I could remember who she is. Is everything okay, Nick? Yeah, I think that's just it. We got to, um... Present on that last statement. The glove. It's not exactly what I call conclusive, but at this point, doubt will do. Doubt is all we've got, so... Doubt is what we shall manufacture. Mr. Wellington. I believe I have the bananas you saw, right here. Ah, so you knew about the bananas too. Why did you say so earlier? But don't think you can use that as a way to pull more information out of me. And that's where you'd be wrong. <laughs> Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Isn't that the baseball glove? Huh? What? what? A baseball glove? 
Doesn't it look delicious? Care for a bite? <laughs> that's, that's, that's not, it's a, no! What, really? Your Honor, I think this proves one very important fact. This witness has bad eyesight, yeah. By the way, just how bad are your eyes? Huh, how, what did you, why are you asking me about this all of a sudden? Your Honor, it is very simple to mistake a glove for a bunch of bananas. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Objection overruled. You, you're one of those people. Yes, you know what I mean. You're like those people who refuse to accept Galileo. You're used to the world of law. Sure, in the end, we find out it's a glove and not bananas. But with you, I do think there's room enough for doubt, don't you? And that's why I asked you how bad your eyesight is. <laughs> They're both 20 to 200. I suppose you're gonna tell me that's terrible, right? That sure sounds terrible. <laughs> Why are you not wearing your glasses today then? Uh-huh. Um, that's because I lost them recently, you see. Of course, I was planning on getting a new pair made right away. But you know, my glasses are no ordinary glasses, so to replace them. How about when you witnessed the crime? Were you wearing your glasses then? How about it, witness? You are an unrelenting evil man. <laughs> you are like those people who rejected. She was brave and courageous, only to be caught up by. Uh, and while she didn't do anything wrong, she was so gruesomely burned at the. Which boils down to you were not wearing your glasses at that time. Therefore, the identity of the woman at the scene of the crime and that of the defendant cannot be proven to be the same by this witness. But the height difference was only nine feet. It was very possible for him to see the face of the culprit standing on the upper path. Hmm. Witness? Please be more accurate in your testimony. Remember, a person's life is at stake. Yes, Your Honor. Now then, please continue with your testimony. Please tell the court what happened next in the moments after you witnessed the crime. <clears throat> the girl on the upper path ran away as soon as she realized I was there. After that, I immediately called the police station to report the crime. Ah, this has been a little while. All right. Oh. Okay, there we go. Let's get the timer going. Yes. Yes. Alright. Okay, let's back into the game. After that, I immediately called the police station to report the crime. It must have been 6.45 when I made the call. They must have a lot of free time on their hands since they showed up within 10 minutes. Hmm. Hmm. So the person who was on the upper path saw you and then ran away. Yes, that is correct. Which is why even someone without a superior brain like me can understand that that girl is the murderer. You may question the witness now, Mr. Wright. Alright, let's see. <laughs> she ran away just like that? Yes, she did. She saw me and flew the nest like the guilty bird she is. Oh, I'm sorry. Was that fun too hard for someone who only got a third grade education? Actually, that did take me a few seconds to get. <laughs> anyway, if she ran away the instant she saw you, how could you tell it was my client? Eek! The witness has already answered that question. He has stated that the defendant is the culprit. This is true, Mr. Wright. I'm striking your question from the record. Hmm, how can I get more information out of him? That I immediately called the police station to report the crime. Immediately, as in... As in immediately. I mean, sure, a minute might have elapsed before I did, but... 
That's the duty of every good citizen, or did they not teach you that at your pitiful school? You think people learn about how to call the police in college? <laughs> hey Nick, I think you should take a look at the court record for a sec. Yeah, I got a feeling that we're gonna see something on like the autopsy report or something. Yeah. Yeah, nine. T okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I gotta play it safe because sometimes I don't know when this game's gonna, you know, make me save something for later. But I think this is what we're what we need to do. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Wellington, would you please take a look at this? You mean the victim's autopsy report? According to this, the murder occurred at 6.28 p.m. So what of it? You said that you called the police immediately after the murder took place. However, by the time you called the police, it was already 6.45 p.m. There's clearly a 15-minute gap here. Do you deny it? I think this court would like to hear what you were doing during this 15 minute gap. The witness was in shock at the time after witnessing a terrible murder. It's only to be expected that he would be a little dazed. 15 minutes is hardly what I would call a little dazed. Mr. Wellington. Yes? Explain yourself. What were you doing during those 15 minutes? Answer the question. I, uh, telephone, er, I mean, spit it out. I was searching for a phone booth. A phone booth? You mean you don't have a cell phone? You and your questions, as if you're trying to open all the layers of a mess. I'm a trusty doll. You must think you're something special. Really something special. Witness. I lost my cell phone. There, are you happy? You lost it? Unbelievable. You lose your glasses and your cell phone? You must be very scatterbrained when it comes to your belongings. What? Are you saying that first-rate people are never allowed to lose things? Have you ever heard that all geniuses have strength quirk juice to buy that rash so I don't think it's so plain people like you can under... Enough! Oh man, oh man. Wait, hold on a second. He lost his cell phone? Make that cell phone, could it be? You mean this phone maybe found? There's no way. Boy, I didn't see this coming. What should I do now? Um... Mr. Wellington, where's your cell phone right now? Huh, what are you getting all excited about? You seem to be a little confused. I found my phone, I'll have you know. See, here it is. Oh, I see. Hmm, looks like he got his phone. And I thought that this maybe this was his. Hmm. Well then, I think we cleared this issue up. At the time of the murder, the witness did not have a cell phone because he had lost it. Therefore, the delay in his call was caused by a search for a phone booth. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the gist of it. I guess you can put it that way and leave it at that. Do you have any further questions, Mr. Wright? Um... Let's do a number two just to be safe here. Your Honor, the witness's testimony does not make any sense. I don't believe there was ever a need for the witness to search for a phone. How dare you! You can't just make outrageous claims like that. You do have some sort of proof, don't you? Well, yeah, of course. This evidence should be good enough, I think. Alright, let's have this proof then. Please present proof that the witness had no need to search for a public phone booth. Um... Okay, um... 
Let's see, anything else? No, I don't think that will do it. Alright, let's try it. It's very simple. This is the evidence that backs up my claim. And yet again, you have presented this court with an obtuse, meaningless item. Huh? It's obtuse and meaningless? I get you at all, Nick. Why do you think you wouldn't need to look for a phone in the first place? Well, that's because... I was looking at the evidence and it just hit me. I thought, hey, you really didn't have to look for a phone. Then why don't you hurry up and present that piece of evidence? Hmm. Now what was that piece of evidence again? Alright. Is it in the pictures? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's right there. <laughs> it's quite simple, actually. Please take a look at this. That's a crime scene photo? Is there a problem with it? Oh, there's nothing wrong with the picture. But if you don't understand my logic after looking at it, something is wrong with you. No! It's, it's a phone booth. That is correct. All the defendant had to do was walk three steps. Mr. Wellington, why do you not use the phone that was right in front of you? Oh. Order! Order! What does reporting the crime a little late prove for the defense? The witness can't explain what he was doing for those 15 minutes. There's reason enough to throw suspicion on his testimony. Yes, this is very true. What do you have to say for yourself, witness? And I bet this phone really is his, Nick. He wants to kill Dustin to get his phone back. And Maggie said she was going to return it to him. So there's no reason for him to kill for it. And on top of that, we still have the phone she found anyway. Hmm. But he wasn't looking for his cell phone. Maybe he was looking for something else? Was he? Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? Do you have any thoughts you'd like to share with the court? Can you offer an explanation as to what the witness was doing during those 15 minutes? Um... Yes! Absolutely! Sure I do. There's only one possible explanation. Alright, let's hear your explanation. However, be forewarned that if your explanation is not persuasive, you'll be penalized. Think carefully before you present, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Eric, I probably shouldn't have said there was only one possibility. Please present to the course the one piece of evidence that will answer the following. Why didn't the witness call the police right away? Let's see a look at the pictures first here. Is that what it wants us to do? Hmm. Oh, I wonder. Perhaps this is the evidence you need to be convinced. Perhaps? Ha <laughs> that was just an idea I thought I'd throw out. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Okay. Okay. Alright. Well, I didn't penalize this by much, so... Is it gonna be the glasses? Wellington. What? Don't do that. You almost gave me a heart attack. 
These are your glasses, aren't they? Oh, where? Where did you find? Gah! I believe the court all heard what you just confessed to. But these glasses are in fact yours. <laughs> oh good, you're on high as well, save and reload. Yeah! I'll tell you where they were found, Mr. Wellington. These glasses were found under the victim's body. Under the victim's body? Order, order. Now, wait a second, hold on. I didn't confess or confirm anything. Your Honor, I think the answer is quite clear here. As he fell, Dustin Prince grabbed the culprit's glasses. The culprit knew that he had to find his glasses and search frantically for them. But he didn't realize that they were under the victim's body. And that is why it took him 15 minutes to make that call. <clears throat> Mr. Wright, are you... Are you indicting the witness as the real murderer? Of course, that's precisely what I'm doing. Oh, oh, ah! <laughs> why are you choking yourself? <laughs> oh boy. Uh, I know I'm right. He is the real murderer. Did you figure it out, Nick? More or less. Turns out the cell phone was the key to the case after all. Anyway, now is our chance to deep six this guy. I'll sink him in one shot. Yeah. This is so exciting watching you work again. Somehow my old self is coming back to me. It's time to sink or swim. Everything rests on the edge of a knife. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Order! Order! Your Honor, the defense. The defense is making a mockery of this court. Without any solid ground to stand on, he accuses the witness of being the murderer. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I, I know, criminal. This third-rate fraud of a lawyer. In that case, why don't we look at it from a different perspective? Let's hear your explanation as to why you are not the murderer. Why, that, that's easy. Um, uh, for example, there's uh, the name the victim wrote. What about that? Oh, you mean the name Maggie? Yeah, even an idiot like you can read that, right? But we already know this was not written by the victim himself. After all, the defendant's name is Maggie and the victim was left-handed. In other words, in order to make the defendant look guilty, the real criminal used the victim's right hand to write her name on the ground. But, but, but... Wouldn't that mean the real criminal was someone the defendant knew? Otherwise, how else would that person know her name was Maggie? Er, Maggie. That is a good point. The witness didn't even know of Miss Bird before this trial. Ah, oh, I forgot. Hmm, was there any way this creep could have known Maggie's name beforehand? Uh, yeah. Yeah, she, uh... She told him. <laughs> I don't know if we'll, how we'll be able to say that, but, uh... It would be best if I could prove that the witness had a chance to learn that the defendant's name was Maggie. Now, will the defense please present his case? How could the witness have known the defendant's name? Um... Let's see... Will that do it? Mr. Wellington, you didn't have your cell phone with you on the day of the murder, correct? So what if I didn't? When you realized you had lost it, what did you do? What did I do? Didn't you try to find it by calling it? Why you? How did you? Your Honor, these questions have nothing to do with... Overruled. Mr. Wright, where are you going with this line of questioning? Do you think there is some relation between the witness's cell phone and the murder? I do, Your Honor. On the day of the murder, Maggie Bird picked up a lost phone in the park. And... She also received a phone call from the owner of the phone. Um, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give this back. I'll be right there, um... I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. You can call me Maggie. That was when you learned her name was Maggie. Uh, um, nah. But you made one fatal mistake. Fatal mistake? My client's name was Maggie, but the name that was written on the ground was Maggie. 
<laughs> oh, the thick lines, yes. This is a mistake you that could only occur if all you knew was how her name sounded. <laughs> order, order. Well, like your honor, the witness has no motive. And your point is, it's very simple, your honor. A person usually would not kill someone without a reason. Mr. Wellington had no reason to kill anyone. That is absolutely correct. I don't have a motive. Hmm, Mr. Wright? Your Honor? Can you explain what motive this witness could have had? It's very simple, Your Honor. Are you sure, Nick? If I said I can't offer an explanation, the trial's over, right? Yeah, but... Now then, please present to the court proof that the witness had a motive. Um... What is this going to be? Is that going to be it? Well, uh, let's risk it. Mr. Wellington's motive is right here. What is this? A list? These phone numbers were pulled from the memory of the phone the defendant found. And we have determined that the people on this list are members of a certain group. You... You looked up all those numbers? Of course! This list of phone numbers was stored in the cell phone's memory. The names and numbers belong to people who are members of a certain con artist group. What, 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 what? Con artist? Can you explain why these numbers were on your phone, Mr. Wellington? Uh, this, this is an outrage, an invasion of privacy. Looking at the phone numbers on a person's phone is the worst crime ever. <laughs> You're one of those people. You just like to cast away the brilliant artist, which means they just took the... Uh, uh, I don't care, Mr. Wellington. Well, I want for you to tell us what this list is about. You think any of you, any of you know what it's like to be a refined fan such as me? Your Honor, this, this is, this is unjustified badgering of the witness. Objection overruled. Mr. Wright, what is the meaning of this? Why would the witness have the numbers of a group of con artists on his phone? Isn't that obvious? The witness is... Well, I think we're, I know where we're going with this, but... Just in case. Mr. Wellington is a member of this very group. No! All your friends' phone numbers are stored right here on this phone. If anyone were to look into these phone numbers, it would be all over for you. That is why you had to kill. No, this is too much! Hmm, that does make quite a bit of sense. Well, Mr. Wellington, would you care to explain? I, um, I... I don't think he wants to explain. I got you now. I, I, that, I... Uh, that police officer... Your Honor! What is it, Mr. Payne? Your Honor, this, this is, this is unjustified badgering of the witness. He said the exact same thing only a few seconds ago. Uh, please! Please, let's think about the content of that phone call. Oh, hello? Oh, thank you. I've been searching for my phone. Is this yours? Oh, I'm glad you called. We can meet up and I can give this back. The defendant had already promised that she would return the phone. After that, all Mr. Wellington had to do was meet Mrs. Bird to get his phone back. Ms. Bird, yeah. Why then would you need to kill anyone? Hmm, that is a valid point. What does the defense think about this? Hmm. 
If you think about it logically, then it makes sense. So maybe we should be thinking outside the box. Yeah, if we think like that, let's see. Maybe that slime ball saw something at the crime scene that made him commit a murder. You thought this right? Hmm, well. I don't think Mr. Wellington picked up his phone in a very friendly manner. But he has promised his phone, so why would he even unfriendly to the defendant? I think he must have seen something that didn't agree with him when he got there. I think I know where this is going. Well, I'm in, Mr. Wright. Alright, alright. Yes, we can switch back. All right. Back to being me again. All right. Here we go. Okay. Oh, did I save her? Not. Ah, I think I just did. Yeah, the timestamp looks real recent. So, okay. Well then, Mr. Wright, what was this something that didn't agree with the witness? Well, I mean, she was standing right next to a uniformed police officer. What Mr. Wellington saw was the victim. The, the victim? You mean Dustin Prince? Dustin Prince had gone on his date right after his shift was over. With no time to change, he went to the park still wearing his police uniform. Oh! Mm -hmm. The girl that picked up my phone is with a policeman. He couldn't have known they were going out, so he began to worry. He was afraid the policeman would ask a few questions before returning the phone. If I do anything suspicious, he might run a check on my phone. In his mind, it was possible they had already run a check on the phone. And he went into a panic, is what you're saying. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Zero. Yes. Officer Prince was murdered simply because he was in uniform. Mr. Payne, do you have any comments? I, um, I'm thinking. Hmm, it seems the truth has come out at last. The witness, Mr. Wellington, you are... Ha! <laughs> Impressive! Not bad for a person with a third-rate education. What's that supposed to mean? The evidence! Evidence! Oh, that guy is really creeping me out. All you've been waving around is talking about is that suspicious cell phone. Suspicious phone number this, suspicious count group that. They're all on that phone. Well, who's to say that phone is really mine? Where's your proof? Your evidence? You want proof that this phone is yours? <laughs> I already told you earlier. The phone I've lost, I already found it. You don't even have the slightest idea who the phone in your hand belongs to. But you can be sure it isn't mine, you simpleton. What? <laughs> it feels good to see you squirm. Hmm, we do seem to have a problem on our hands with this phone. Whose phone is it? Without knowing that, it's meaningless as evidence. Y Your Honor! This is bad. I can't let him turn the tables on me like this. Hmm, this cell phone. There has to be something I've overlooked. There's gotta be. Hmm, maybe. All right. We already had the stored numbers and that didn't... I got it, we should check for fingerprints. Fingerprints? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Wellington must have left some prints on this phone. Nick, don't you remember? When you got that from Maggie, you wiped it off. I what? He said there was sand all over it, so... Wiped it? I wiped it? Pretty thoroughly, too. Ah! <laughs> oh, great. It's all so much fun watching third-rate trash babble like morons amongst themselves. Ah, he's made a complete recovery. How many times do I have to say this? My phone is right here, you see? Oh, and incidentally, you can't check the numbers stored on this phone. It must have glitched because all the numbers just magically disappeared. 
You've got to be joking. He erased all the numbers I was going to use as evidence? Mr. Wellington, what's this? By the tone of your voice, it sounds like you still have some fight left in you. Where did you finally find your cell phone? <laughs> oh, you are too much. And of course, you have no idea what I'm talking about. I, I, oh my god, now I remember. Yep. Oh, looks like they hung up. Ah, good. I finally found it. Oh. So that's when. What's wrong, Mr. Attorney? Why the harsh glare in your eyes? Nick, we worked so hard to get this far, but if you don't do something quick, he's gonna get us scot free. I know. I know this phone has to be his. How am I supposed to prove something like that? Mr. Wright, you cannot prove who the owner of that cell phone is. Your indictment has no basis and therefore no power. It looks like you came up with a, pe came up a penny short. Where? Where did I go wrong? Don't blame yourself. You're merely a third-rate lawyer. You only made one big mistake. Who are you? What are you? That's something you haven't figured out for yourself yet. Who am I? Who I am? The court hereby concludes the cross-examination. <laughs> if that will be all, I'll have to bid you gentlemen and ladies goodbye. I have reservations at an ultra-fancy restaurant on the upper side of town. Thank you for your assistance. You had a stressful day, so please, bon appetit. What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to just let it go at that? Uh, yeah, we never wait and see, do we? That's not how we get, that's how not how we make progress. Please wait, Your Honor. All right, Nick. I think I may be able to prove it. Prove it? Prove what, Mr. Wright? Everything. Your Honor, the cross-examination has already ended. Besides, the defense is just going to badger the witness with more inane questions. You will not harass the witness. Is that clear, Mr. Wright? <laughs> Did you hear that? No harassment allowed, Mr. Attorney. Please, Your Honor. Very well. But this is your last chance, Mr. Wright. You may present one piece of evidence to the court. I only get one shot at this. If you cannot prove everything, it's over. For your client and for you. Do you fully understand? Yes, Your Honor. I'm sure you are well aware, Your Honor, but the cross-examination period has ended. Were you paying attention, Mr. Payne? I said that Mr. Wright could present only one more piece of evidence. Oh. Now then, Mr. Wright, this is your last chance. Last chance sounds like a save. <laughs> all right. It all comes down to this. It's go time. Please present the one piece of evidence that will explain everything. Okay. Um. What is this going to be? Uh, anything in these pictures that looks suspicious? That's not what I wanted to do. Okay. Hmm. Oh my god, he's possessed or freaking out. Oh yeah, that guy is, uh... Yeah, he is... Um... Hmm... 
It's not gonna be these again, is it? Is this your final answer? It's a bit disappointing. No, 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 that was just a friendly gesture. Uh, okay. Okay. Come on. Uh, don't think it's any of those. So. <laughs> Okay, this is kind of irritating me, so I'm gonna go ahead and look it up. Here. Oh! Oh! Okay. It's my business card. I hand wrote my cell phone number on the back. Oh, okay. So he took ours, I guess. Okay. Okay. Okay, come on. It all comes down to this. It's go time. He presents one piece of evidence that will explain everything. Why, thank you, how nice. Here, please have one of mine. Judge's business card added to the court record. Wait, what am I doing? This isn't time to be exchanging business cards. Your Honor, there's something very important about that card, and that is... This card is important because of what is on the back. Hmm? You wrote your cell phone number on the back, but... But that's exactly it. Can you please call this number from your cell phone? Huh? Right now? The court is still in session. It's okay, you'll see. Okay, if you say so. Is the defense preparing something, Mr. Wright? We're going to call my cell phone now. And then the court will see everything for what it is. Of all the idiotic stupid things to... Yeah, you're worried, aren't you? <laughs> of course that would be his ringtone. <laughs> uh, what? Why is my phone? And what is with this stupid sounding ringtone? Beep. <laughs> Mr. Wellington. Hmm. How strange. I can almost swear that you're holding my phone. Your? Ah! Uh, no, 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 it can't! By the way, before I forget, thank you very much for the lump on my head this morning. Mm. I don't think I need to explain any further except to say... When you went to retrieve your cell phone, you mistakenly took the wrong one. <laughs> Mm. Ah! Ah! <sighs> so that is what happened. You were knocked out by Mr. Wellington. He's a man who lives on his pride and self-image alone. In order to hide his involvement with the con artist group, he has become paranoid and has lost all ability to make rational judgments. Hmm. Then, then, Mr. Wright, the phone you're holding... It's Mr. Wellington's, naturally. 
Speaking of that man, how is he, Mr. Payne? Uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Now then, this court finds the defendant, Maggie Bird, not guilty. God damn, he's literally trying to kill himself. Yeah. That's what I was just thinking. We have a... Uh... <laughs> what was left of him to arrest, really? <laughs> that is all. This court is adjourned. September 8, 2, 16 p.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. <laughs> oh, I knew this real you would shine through eventually. I'm so moved by what you've done for me, sir. Thank you so much, Mr. Wright. I feel really bad for Dustin. He didn't do anything to deserve this. It's probably because of me. Hmm? My whole life has been nothing but a whirlwind of bad luck and failures. Your whole life? It can't be that bad, can it? Since I was six months old, when I fell from the ninth floor of my apartment building, I've been hit by all sorts of vehicles, gotten sick from all sorts of foods, failed at almost every test I've ever taken, experienced almost every kind of disaster, and never won or even tied at a game of tic-tac-toe. <laughs> my life has really been nothing but a string of disasters. That is, uh, pretty bad. Up until I went to college, I was known as the goddess of misfortune. And then at the academy, everyone called me Lady Luckless. Lady Luckless? What's worse is that my misfortune always seems to latch onto those around me. What do you mean? When I see someone in trouble, I always try to help. Ah, that's right. You were talking about this earlier. It happened again recently, too, sir. There was an old lady pacing back and forth by the pedestrian crosswalk. I gave her my hand and, before I knew it, we were having dinner at my house. Oh! I'm sure that Dustin's gone because of me. That's not true. That glove didn't even have any sort of special meaning. It was just a present to say thanks for covering one of my night shifts. Oh, I see. Everything is all my fault. Dustin's death? Your head being all messed up? Uh, well, I don't think my head is that messed up yet. I'm going to find a new life for myself starting now. Next time we meet, I'm sure I'll... I'm sure I'll have found a whole new ocean's worth of good luck by then, sir. Yeah, after all, the goddess of misfortune is only a name. You bet. I'm gonna make it, I promise. Next time we meet, I'll only be an unlucky person instead of a goddess. Uh, yeah, that's the spirit. Well, Mr. Wright, Maya, I should get going. Okay, good luck to you. Thanks. You take care of yourselves. I mean, Ross, for keeping your goals achievable. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. What a horrible day. I got my memory back, but things are still a little fuzzy. But you're okay, and that's what counts? You really had me worried. Come on, let's go back to the office. Hmm, I'm afraid to ask, but here it goes. So this might sound bad, but, uh, who are you? <laughs> what? I thought you said you got your memory back. At that moment, everything really did come back to me. <laughs> Detective Gumshoe. He's someone I've had clashes with in the past during certain cases. But he's also been a good ally during others. The Judge. He's a lovable kind old man who is easily swayed by other people's opinions. But in the end, he always comes up with the right verdict. This person, I haven't got a clue. He seems to know me, but maybe he's mistaken me for someone else. And this girl, Maya. You finally remembered. This is Maya Faye, my assistant. That's right, I have so many unforgettable memories about her. For example, Earth to Nick, what's wrong? You keep staring at me. Don't tell me you missed me. Uh, well, yeah, I suppose I have. I feel like I haven't seen you in ages. Oh? Well, I'm back now, so it's time for us to create new memories together. Alright, sounds good. All the phone numbers on my phone were erased by Mr. Wellington. I guess I have to start over from the very beginning. 
Come on, Nick, let's go to our usual burger joint. Okay, okay. Actually, it hasn't even been that long since she came back in my life. <laughs> and that story... The story began on one rainy afternoon two months ago. All right. All right, let me save and... Yes, I definitely want to save, yes. Okay. And with that, we will call it. Yay, it's time for Red Acted. <laughs> All right. Yeah, right on. Thanks for the show. Nice job tonight. Thank you, guys. Yes. All right, let's... Let's see who's off and running. You know what? I'm going to send you to Crash Cat Games. She recently became affiliate, so uh, she's playing Rogue Galaxy. So, game I've uh, never got around to myself, but she looked interesting. So... Um, let me double check, make sure she's not, uh, likely to log off soon. Do -do 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 -do. Okay. Been running less than an hour, so I doubt she will. So she should be going for a while. Alright, see you guys tomorrow for more heady time.